A year ago, I quit my job as a software developer at Google. I had worked there for over 12 years. In the year before I quit, I had been working on a mobile word game called Toggle. I'd released the game on the Apple and Google stores, but it had failed to earn many downloads on its own. The feedback on the game was good. I had put a lot of effort into honing its mechanics, and had even read the entire dictionary to curate it to the exact set of words I wanted. And while the feedback on the game was good, and it was in a popular niche, this wasn't enough. If you know anything about mobile game development, this probably isn't a surprise. While software developers love to believe in the idea of build it and they will come, that just isn't the reality here. There is little automatic exposure in mobile app stores, and many areas of mobile gaming, especially word games, are extremely saturated. I felt that Toggle would do well if anyone actually tried it. So I decided my first project after quitting would be to try to get Toggle into more hands. Did I know anything about marketing? Absolutely not. My plan, perhaps a little naive, write some blog posts, pay for some ads, post on social media, and hope that all of this would start a word of mouth chain reaction that would lead to an ultimately positive return on investment. Did it work? Here's what happened. I wrote a couple of blog posts about interesting aspects of the game. I posted these in a few places and got basically zero attention from these posts. Failure one. I tried posting promotional videos and gameplay footage on TikTok and YouTube without much success. Failure two. I then spent too much money on ads. My favorite ad platform was Reddit. Despite it being a paid post, there were lots of positive comments that were encouraging. Technically, the most effective ad platform was Google, in terms of clicks per dollar. Google ads were the reason I was able to get to more than 10,000 downloads on Android with over 100 reviews. But these users seemed generally less engaged than those I got from Reddit. Overall, the game was definitely made more popular, mostly through ads. However, it wasn't even close to economical. After I stopped running ads for it, Toggle settled at a revenue of about $1 to $2 per day and would generally peak around 20 to 30 active users in a 30 minute period. This would take years to pay off the amount I'd already spent on ads. This wasn't good enough, and I was out of ideas on how to do better. I knew I had a good product, but I had been warned that mobile games were not a good way to make money. So I decided to move on. I had an idea for a new mobile game project based on a proven gameplay concept that nonetheless hadn't been explored much by other games. You can check out the video up there if you're curious about the details. But after completing a prototype, I realized something. If I didn't take a different approach, this game might also be doomed to obscurity. It was too depressing to think about spending so much time completing a project, only for it to ultimately fizzle to nothing. I wasn't sure how I would do it, but I got interested in the idea of community building. I had seen other game developers build communities on YouTube, and wondered if I could do the same. But there was a problem. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Jumping right into a channel about myself and my project seemed way too difficult. I had never filmed myself, done a voiceover, set up lights, edited a video, and I had basically no experience with cameras and microphones. So I had this idea that I could start a different channel to ease myself into it. A faceless channel that wasn't too personal, so I didn't have an emotional connection to my likely terrible work while I was learning the basics. This is where my side quest begins. I had been playing Pokemon Go for a while and really enjoyed the challenge of his throwing minigame. The highest achievement in this minigame is the excellent throw. For every Pokemon in the game, getting an excellent throw is a little different. For me, it's a fun challenge to figure out how to perfect the throw for each Pokemon. I had this idea that I could start a channel with videos about how to get excellent throws, with each video focused on a different Pokemon. Other channels had made generic excellent throw guides, but no one had attempted specific guides for each Pokemon type in the way I imagined. Learning as I went, I created a first video about a Pokemon called Electrike and posted it to my new channel, The Excellent Pokedex. It used simple in-game footage recorded on my phone, along with an AI voice from Eleven Labs. The quality was about what you'd expect from a first video, but I posted it on a subreddit called The Silph Road, and the reception was encouraging. I decided to continue making these videos, and eventually made one that ended up getting more than 5,000 views, which was huge for me. For the most part, though, my videos didn't get many views, and I decided to take a break going into Christmas 2023. By this time, the channel had around 240 subscribers. I finally felt good enough to do something closer to the original purpose of this journey, and 
published a video about the game that I prototyped, Merchants of the Stars. While this video has less than 100 views to date, I was happy to be making the kind of video that I originally set out to make, using my actual voice and face and covering my projects. But now I had a new problem. YouTube was too interesting. I was more interested in making videos than in continuing work on my game. Oops. Around this time in December 2023, a new mechanic was discovered in Pokemon Go, which I call Perfect Throws. This was right in the wheelhouse of the excellent Pokedex. After spending several weeks gathering footage and editing, I released my 12 minute video, The Rise and Fall of Perfect Throws in Pokemon Go. This was the first video where I used my real voice, which I continued to do for all following videos. I had no idea how this would do, but the reception was amazing, and it was soon by far my most successful video. Up to now, it has over 30,000 views and 200 gained subscribers. This felt great, and encouraged me to keep making videos on this channel. So I decided to make another long video, this one 20 minutes long. The new video was very editing intensive, and it took a couple of weeks before I could finally release it. The reception was good, but I was a little disappointed that it turned out to do a little worse than the Perfect Throws video, topping out around 13,000 views. Despite its fewer views, it actually did more to attract subscribers, and it has accounted for about 350 subs so far. Due to their length, these two successful videos had high watch time, with a total of over 3,000 watch hours. This brought me so close to the monetization threshold of 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours that I knew I had to stick with this channel until I reached that milestone. I had to become a professional Pokemon Go YouTuber. Yep, we're finally getting to that. This wasn't even close to one of my 2024 bucket list items, but after everything I'd done, it seemed like a natural goal. Coasting on my existing success and a number of smaller videos, I hit 1,000 subscribers by the beginning of April, and hit 4,000 watch hours soon after. I applied for monetization, and was quickly accepted. High on my success, I then released what I intended as my third blockbuster video, a video about Quick Catch, another mechanic in Pokemon Go. Like before, I spent weeks scripting, recording, and editing this new 20 minute video. But at last, I was brought down to earth. The new video received fewer than 2,000 views to this day, and made about $13. This isn't bad for most of my videos, but given how much effort was invested, it was a flop. I'd finally ridden the emotional roller coaster that is YouTube. I was technically monetized, but to actually be paid, I needed to make at least $100. I was still a long, long way from that. The failure of my latest high effort video made me a bit leery of investing so much effort into a video again. Instead, I made a number of medium effort videos that did moderately well. I kept uploading videos, with no major success and a couple of annoying flops. I made another video that I was really proud of, called The Hunt for Wiglet, that incorporated a proper storyline and real-life footage, and it absolutely bombed. In fact, it did so bad that I re-uploaded it. This is against conventional wisdom, but I convinced myself that the video underperformed because YouTube never properly tested it. Typically, videos get a noticeable bump in impressions a few hours after upload. This happens to the vast majority of my videos but this never happened in this case. After the re-upload, it seemed my suspicions were confirmed. The video ended up breaking 1k views. After a few months of mediocre performance, I was able to be in the right place at the right time to find another success. Pokemon Go's developer released a patch that broke the catch mechanics in a subtle but noticeable way. Luckily for me, catch mechanics are my specialty, and I had the specific footage required to demonstrate the change. So I made a video demonstrating the bug by comparing my archival Pokemon Go footage to the current situation, and it took off. It got almost 15,000 views, and the video has made more than $50. It has also powered me past 2,000 subscribers, a number I hadn't expected to reach until much later. With that video, and its follow-up when the bug was fixed, I easily passed the $100 payout threshold. Apparently, I should be paid in July. And with that, I accidentally became a pro Pokemon Go YouTuber after quitting Google just over a year ago. I'm not quite sure what I'll do next. I don't plan to abandon the excellent Pokédex, but I also want to make more videos on this channel, as well as continue working on Merchants of the Stars. Time will tell what will happen after I click upload on this video. Like and subscribe if you'd like to hear more stories about my projects and adventures. I'll see you later.